So let's talk about the question three, which is coming from um, an infinite long line of a charge. So the question is saying an infinite long line of a charge has a linear charge density of 8.00 times 10 to the power negative 12 centimeters per meter or coulomb per meter. A proton is at a distance of 19 centimeters from the line and is moving directly toward the line with a speed of 1200 meters per second. How close does the proton get to the line of a charge? Okay, so now this topic is very very interesting. So let's first come up with data. So we, we have been told that we have got the linear density, the linear charge density which is represented by lambda. So we have been told that is 8.00 times 10 raised to the power negative 12 coulomb per meter. What else do we know? We have been told that the proton is at, is at a distance of 19 centimeters, meaning that is our initial distance. So our initial distance is 19.0 centimeters. Now we need to find the final distance, which we don't know. That's the question now. How close does the proton get to the line of the charge? Meaning that's the final um, displacement, the final distance. So we have been told that the velocity, now this velocity initially is the initial velocity. So the question is, uh, moving direct toward the line with a speed of, so it was moving with a speed of that. So the speed now is 1200 meters per second. So we are saying that how close does the proton get to the line of the charge? So when the proton gets to the line of the charge, it will stop moving. Now we want to find the final speed distance at that point, meaning that the final speed is zero. Okay. Now there are some few formulas which we need to know for us to work out any question for an infinite okay, of a charge. Now these formulas I think is going to be a bit complex if I can show you where they are coming from, but I'm going to give you such that whenever you see a question asking about the infinite, you'll be able to use the same formulas and you'll be able to find what, what is missing. Okay, so the first formula which we have to know is the uh, the potential energy. Now the potential energy we are talking about the electric force and electric field. It is given by the potential energy is given by the charge times the voltage. So this is the charge and that is the voltage. It's not the velocity. This is not the velocity, but it's the voltage. Okay, that is one formula which we need to know. Another formula now we need to know that eh, we always have um, conservation of energy. Now conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can be transformed from one state to another. So what we know is eh, the initial mechanical energy should be equal to the eh, me uh, final mechanical energy. So we are going to have the kinetic energy. Okay, since it is moving, we have got the velocity. We also have the potential energy because we have got the charge and the voltage. Okay, so we we'll say the kinetic energy initial plus the potential energy final or initial should be equal to the kinetic energy initial final plus the potential energy final. Now one thing we have to remember is that kinetic energy is always half mv initial squared plus the potential energy we're talking about here is not mg, it's not mhg where we say mass times gravity times h no, but it is the charge times the voltage. So I'm going to say the charge times the voltage. Now which voltage? The voltage initial. Okay. Even here is going to be half mv final squared plus the charge the voltage final. Now this let, let's not confuse ourselves here. Here I'm using this, this is the velocity, but this is the charge, the voltage, okay, which we are talking about here for the potential energy is the, the, the voltage and not the what the velocity so now one thing we have to remember here we have been told that since we are saying that as it is getting closer to the proton the line of the charge meaning that the final velocity is zero we don't expect to have that so we have half mv final squared plus this is the q v initial that is the voltage then again q v final so I'm going to leave this formula here. I will leave it there. Now I'm going to get it here and put it down here. 
let's get rid of this. Another interesting formula which you need to know when you're dealing with the infinity, infinity of a long line of a charge, is this one, the voltage difference. So the voltage difference is given by the voltage initial minus voltage final should be equal to the uh, linear charge density divided by 2 pi absolute. So then this is given by lin RF divided by R initial. RF is the, the one we are trying to find, this one here. Again, this formula, so now here, only three important formulas I, you need to know. The formula for the potential energy, which is given by the charge times the voltage. The formula for the conservation of energy, and this formula for the vote, uh, voltage difference. Now, after, after doing this, one thing we have to remember is that uh, we don't have this. But now, we don't have voltage. We have not been given any voltage here. But I can make voltage as a subject of formula from this equation. Okay, so let's just get this equation here and make voltage as a subject of formula. How? So we have half mv final squared plus qv initial will be equal to qv final. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to shift this to the right hand side. So it will be it will be what? It will be half mv final squared. Oh, it should be initial because final has already gone. What I mean here is this. Let me show you. It was initial. This was supposed to be initial. So even here, it's supposed to be initial. Let me just write it. So the formula is half mv initial squared plus um, plus half or plus the charge plus voltage initial is equal to the charge voltage fine. I'll shift this to the right hand side. I'll have half mv fine initial squared should be equal to this and that. Now, remember that what we have here, we are trying to make this V initial minus V final as a subject of formula, which is the voltage initial minus voltage final as a subject of formula. I can make here, now to make, I want to make, I want to make V initial minus V final, meaning I can factor out negative Q. So let's do this. I, let, let, me, let me first put this one here. I'm going to rewrite this like that. Then this will have this. Okay, now I can get rid of this. Let's make negative Q as a subject of formula. So negative Q will be equal to, meaning here is going to be negative V final, so that negative and negative should give me the positive, meaning I go back to that. This is going to be plus v final like that is equal to negative half mv like that after doing this the next thing what i'm going to do is i'll divide both sides by negative q so if i do that it's the same as i start writing this since it's positive then i i say v then this it's the same thing i'll divide by q now here here i'm supposed to put just one so it's half mv1 i squared i divide by negative q so i will remain with this negative half mv initial squared divided by q like that now that i have this what i have to do is since i don't have voltage i'm going to replace this with that so let's go ahead and do that so that is going to be replaced by half mv initial squared divided by Q should be equal to the linear um, linear charge density 2 pi absolute then R final divided by R initial like that and our goal is to find the R final now we have everything here so this absolute is just basically the the constant 
it is 8.85 times 10 raised to the power 12. And you are going to be given always, when you, whenever you, you see this question, just look um, the last paper or la the last page of the question paper, you'll be given this constant. Then again, when we're talking about the charge, we're talking about the proton. Okay? So the charge of the proton is constant as well. We know it already. So these I'm going to put them where the charge of the proton is um, 1.67 times 10 to the power negative to the power negative 19. That's the charge. Then the mass of the proton again is 1.60 times 10 to the power negative 27 kg. And now I can get rid of this and put this formula on top. We plug in everything, we see what we're going to have. So I'll get this, I'll put it here. Now let's plug in the values. So we have um, negative half. The mass is uh, 1.60 times 10 raised to the power negative 27. The velocity we have been given, okay? The velocity we have been given, and we have it there, which is 1200. Okay? So the velocity is 1200, but we square it. I divide this by the charge, 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 12. This should be equal to the linear charge density we have been given is 8.00 times 10 raised to the power 12. I divide this by 2 pi, then in the brackets, this is constant, we have said it already, times 10 to the power negative 12, lin r final divided by, this is 19. I'm not going to change it to meters because it's a ratio, r final divided by r initial. So the units, even if I leave them as in centimeters, I'm going to have my answer in centimeters. So. Let's punch now the, the calculator for the top part here. So negative 1 over 2 is the same as negative 0 0.5, then times 1.60 exponent negative 27, which is the same as time 10 to the power negative 27, times 1200 squared. I divide this by 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 12. OK, so what are we getting? So we are saying uh, 0 0.5 negative 0 0.5 times 1.6 0 0.5 times 1.67 times 10 to the power negative 27 times 1200 then squared. We divide this by We are dividing this by 1.6 times 10 raised to the power 19. Okay. So I'm getting 0 0.0075, which is the same as, I'll, I'll just put it in scientific notation. So it's negative um, 7 point. 7.51 7.515 I can just say 7.52 I round it off times 10 to the power negative 3 ok this is going to be equal to now we do this one alone so that should give us um, 8.00 times 10 to the power neg 12 divided by, I'll put open brackets, 2 times 8.85 exponent neg 12, then times pi. I close the brackets. So what are we getting? So now I'm getting 0. Point, here I'm getting 0. Point, 0. 0.144. 
okay I'll just leave it there then we have lean RF then 19 here so what I'm going to do now here is I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.144 even here 0 0.144 so what are we going to have we have neg 7 point five two exponent neg three times ten to the power negative three divided by zero point zero zero point one four four okay so I'm getting negative zero point zero five two should be equal to lin RF divided by nineteen. One thing we should understand here when we're talking about lean natural log is this natural log is always in base 10 it's always in base e so it's like we have this then you have got 19 is equal to negative 0 0.0522 so it is always in base e so and we can change now this from log to exponential so e raised to the power what we have here should be equal to what we have here or if you want you can just take e both sides you can say you can put E here, you can also put E there. This and this will cancel. Then you're going to have R, F, R, final divided by 19 is equal to that. If you don't want to do that, you can say, you can use this property. This is in base E. So it is E raised to the power, what is outside is equal to what is inside. So it is, I'll say, uh, e raised to the power negative 0 0.0522 is equal to RF divided by 19, like that. Then now, you just punch on your calculator. Shift where there is lean. That's where E is. Then e, negative 0 0.0522. Okay. So it is giving me 0 0.949 should be equal to RF divided by 19. Then now at this point we can cross multiply. We cross multiply, we'll find that R final will be equal to this times 19. It should be 18.0 centimeters. So that's how close is going to be. Okay? So in this case we want to find we're finding the RF. That's the answer. So it's just a matter of you knowing those three formulas. The formula for the potential energy, which is given by the charge times the voltage, the conservation of energy, and as well as um, the voltage difference. As simple as that. So when you when you see any question for infinity, okay, an infinite long line of a charge, just remember this simple principle, see what is missing, then you'll be able to get what, what is missing. That is it for this one.